Welcome to another episode of How It's Made with your host, Julian Michelson. Get excited because today we are discussing something you may be familiar with, the paper hole puncher. We'll dive into two manufacturing processes used to make this wonderful tool, progressive stamping and steel drawing. Let's get started. The progressive stamping manufacturing process uses sheet metal. Sheet metal itself can be made from a variety of different metals, but progressive stamping specifically uses aluminum, brass, steel, and cold rolled steel. The steel drawing manufacturing process can not only use sheet metal, but also bar, tube, and wire stock. The steel used is typically low carbon steel that is less than 0.05% carbon. Progressive stamping is a metalworking method that can encompass punching, coining, bending, and several other ways of modifying metal raw material combined with an automatic feeding system. The feeding system pushes a strip of metal through all of the stations of a progressive stamping die. Each station performs one or more operations until a finished part is made. The final station is a cutoff operation, which separates the finished part from the carrying web. There are several types of progressive stamping, including embossing, bending, flanging, and coining. Embossing dies use tension to stretch metal into a shallow depression for raised or sunken design. Bending can be defined simply as a forming operation in which the metal is deformed along a straight axis. The last variation we'll discuss is coining, which is similar to embossing. Dies create the part shape by squeezing the metal under extreme pressure. Coining creates variations in metal thickness. Here we observe the different stamping variations of our hole puncher. As you can see, coining is used to display the logo. The shape of the lid is embossed in order to enable the punching mechanism. Almost every other feature utilizes the bending process. The sides of the base hold the lid together and provide structure, while the lips function as puncher holders. There are many benefits to progressive stamping. Firstly, it's a fast and cost-effective solution for manufacturing large quantities of complex products. The process is well suited for higher volumes, reaching up to 100 million parts because the per piece setup and labor costs drop as production levels increase. Complex products and innovative designs can be created using sophisticated precision stampings. Benefits include very tight tolerances of around 2 thousandths of an inch for piercing operations and an angular tolerance of 1 degree for bending operations. Constraints on shape formation and progressive stamping include it not being an ideal process for high accuracy deep drawing when the actual depth from the stamping surpasses the diameter of the part. Also, increased uncooked material input is necessary to transfer components along the feed. Similar processes include machines such as the Forslide, which is a metalworking machine tool used in high volume manufacture of small stamped components from bar or wire stock. However, unlike progressive stamping, the force slide cannot handle large stock or produce enough force to draw or stretch material. Let's talk about design guidelines. When a bend is made close to an edge, the material may tear unless bend relief is given. The edge should be a sufficient distance from the form. The distance should never be less than the radius of the bend plus the thickness. When a bend is made too close to a hole, the hole may become deformed. To avoid deformation, we set the minimum distance equal to 2.5 times the thickness of the material plus the bend radius. When placing formed features next to one another, care should be taken to allow clearance. If the station does not clear a form already placed in the part, the form could be flattened out. Get ready, because now we're going to talk about steel drawing. In our product, the dies for the punching rods are made with a stamped chassis and a punching shank which is constructed out of standard steel drawn rods. Drawing is a metalworking process which uses tensile forces to stretch metal. As the metal is drawn, it stretches thinner into a desired shape and thickness. Drawing is classified into two types, sheet metal drawing and wire, bar, and tube drawing. Drawing is usually done at room temperature, thus classified as a cold working process. There are many variations of steel drawing. Some of these processes include hydromechanical deep drawing, hydroform process, aqua draw process, marform process, and the hydraulic deep drawing process, just to name a few. The marform process, for example, operates using the principle of rubber pad forming techniques. Deep recessed parts with either vertical or slope walls can be formed. 
Now we should highlight a few benefits and advantages of steel drawing over similar processes such as hot extrusion. Steel drawing provides a smoother and more polished appearing exterior finish. Steel drawing also has more accurate and precise dimensions. And with its increased tensile and yield strength, it's no wonder it has better machinability as well. There are two major design guidelines for steel drawing you can't forget. First is uniform thickness in metal. A uniform metal thickness reduces the die stresses and improves manufacturing productivity. Second is that the reduction in area is usually restricted between 20 and 50% because greater reductions would exceed the tensile strength of the material, depending on its ductility. To achieve a certain size or shape, multiple passes through progressively smaller dies may be required. The economical production quantities of steel drawing are 1,000 to 100 million, and the precision or tolerance on a part features 1 8 inch deviation tolerance per 10 foot length. We hope you enjoyed this week's action-packed episode on the paper hole puncher and the processes behind it. Tune in next week for another riveting episode of How It's Made with me, your host, Julian Michelson. I'll catch you on the flippity flop.